I will check homework Wednesday. I already checked up to and including this one, the Thursday one. So everything from here down, that's for tonight, new one. Don't copy it now. I'll have time at the end to show you. Um, so I'll be checking that homework again. Uh, and I also have a worksheet for you tonight. And we have a lab tomorrow, yet another lab. We've got a lot of labs in this chapter. Bar's lab's kind of a neat one. It's a wall. We'll need both periods for it. It'll take both periods. It's a popcorn lab. All right? Um, <clears throat> so we have to finish one last thing before we get to this. Okay, we have one more concept to cover. What's this chapter been on? It's been all about numbers. It's been the opposite of the first chapter, which was all about, well, the whole test was matching, multiple choice, that kind of stuff, questions. This test, what's it going to be? It's going to be all math, some type of math, some type of numbers. Well, one of the things we run into in science and in chemistry is numbers are just too big to be writing down all the time. See that number up there on the board? Take a look back there. That's a number. It's called Avogadro's number. And it will be used pretty much on a daily basis in the next chapter. And we'll use it again after that. We're not going to see the only time we're going to see it. Nobody wants, you, know, you may think scientists are nerds, and they are, but they're not idiots. No one wants to write that number down every day and write all those zeros out, right? So we have a way of dealing with that, something called scientific notation, or what you may have called exponential notation. My guess is you know how to do this, okay? You probably already know how to do this. So if I had something like, oops, uh, oh, I know why. Now, oh, come on. That's not right. If I had something like this, and I wanted you to put that into exponential notation, my guess is most of you could do it. Although my guess is also that most of you would get it, well, not most of you, some of you would get it wrong. And not for the reason you think. You know what scientific notation is. It's like times 10 to the whatever power, right? Every get an answer for that in your head. They're not going to ask you to write it down. But my guess is if I did, about a third of you would be wrong. Get an answer for that. What would that be times 10 to some power? You know what I'm saying? Right? You've all done that in middle school. You all got, got that in a math class. Let's get some math. Maybe I'll get lucky and call on somebody who gets it wrong. Uh, Dylan, what do you think? Times 10 to the fourth power? Was everybody thinking that? Because I don't think Paris was. What were you thinking, Paris? What were you thinking? 24 times 10 to the third power. And I'll bet you at least a third of you were, were thinking of, of this one versus that one. And you know which one's correct? That one. Maybe half of you even. Okay? Now, that's just one little thing. It's not a big deal. Is this a wrong answer? Technically, no. That is the same number as that. That is the same number as that, but it's not in scientific notation. So I've got to go over the rules for how we go in and out of these. And the other thing I want to do here is try to show you, as I've been doing all year long, I mean, it's only been a short year, it's been a month and a half, but it's cool, trying to not have you memorize your way through stuff, but rather thinking your way through it. So whereas you probably did these in the past, counting decimals and memorizing left or right or positive or negative exponents, I'm going to try to get you to think about it and maybe even, you know, uh, make it harder for you, I think a lot of you. But in the long run, make it better. Because what happens is when you memorize stuff, it stays with you for about five minutes. And then as soon as the test is over, it's gone. I'd rather you understand scientific notation. I think you will when you're done with this class. We'll see. All right, let's do it. I'm only going to give you take a, a, a few seconds to give you the notes on it. There's only three steps. But before I even do that, let me tell you the reason why we do scientific notation. We do it because we work in science, especially in chemistry, but in all sciences, with very large and small and or small numbers. Not and or. <laughs> very large or small numbers. It can't be both. And it's a way to represent those numbers in manageable in a manageable way. Easier to write it down. It's as simple as that. So much of what we do. You're going to learn about this in the periodic table. Why does the periodic table look like that? Where do those numbers come from? Turns out they're all about convenience, just like this is about convenience. We use the periodic table not because it is what it is, but because it makes it easier for us to see things. And those numbers up there, they came from somewhere. They're a new scale that we made so that it's easier. You're going to see all that stuff. Why do we use scientific notation? It's easier. Three steps to convert it. 
get the scientific notation. Unknown. There are some common mistakes made at this point. I purposely pointed that first one out to you. Not moving the decimal to the correct space. That's the first thing you got to remember. Because you don't just move the decimal to the beginning of the number, but rather so that there's only one digit to its left. And if you think about it, that makes sense. All right? I don't want to have a random, because uh, remember, a number can be, I mean, I could have, you know, 2, 4, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm going to move it to a different place in each case. I don't want to do that. I want to always move it to the same place, not just where the numbers begin or end, but rather so there's only one digit to the left of the number, uh, of the uh, decimal. So there's only one digit to its left. And I will obviously illustrate these with multiple examples in just a minute. But we'll copy the notes first. So that's the first mistake that some people make. When you, I gave you this guy as my first example, you don't just move it here. You have to move it to there. So there's only one digit to its left. Okay. Second thing you do, where do you think in both cases, regardless of whether you did it right or wrong, moving it one digit to the left, what did you do to get that exponent? It was pretty simple. What did you do to get the exponent? What do you think, JC? No, 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 no. How did I know what the exponent was going to be when I did that? 24, when I did that? Well, just tell me in, in simple terms. When you do this, how do I know what that exponent is going to be? Yeah, just count the number of spaces that move. That's all. It's very, it's very simple. It doesn't have to be a technical thing. Just count the number of decimal places you move. That's all. And that gives you the exponent. Now, we all know there are different exponents, different signs to those exponents. And that's where the third step is going to come into play. And it is the last step. And you're going to want me to say something. Matter of fact, if I ask you the reason, I'm going to give you the one. I'm going to give you one right now. Watch. Don't copy. Just watch. Okay, we all agree this guy will be 2.4 times 10, and there's a third up there. This guy, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2.4, and I move to 10 space, I move to 4 spaces, so there's a four up there. But one of those guys has a negative exponent. Which one is it? This guy, right? Everybody agree? All right, and you're right. But if I asked you, so, okay, so what rule would you make up? Here's the rule you'd make up, I bet you. If I move it to the right, it's negative. If I move it to the left, it's positive. And I am just going to say this. Put a positive or negative sign next to it. And you're going to use common sense. Instead of memorizing left or right, positive or negative. And there's a very good reason for that. An excellent reason for that that I will try to illustrate for you as this period goes on. I'll start off with a simple example. Let's look at that guy again. What we say the rule was? You made it up. You made it up. You would probably have said this. Positive exponent. One, two, three. I moved it to the left. So left, positive. One, two, three, four. Right is negative. And I'm going to memorize that. I'm going to have it down. I'm going to know this stuff for the test. Okay. Did I give you a guy on here? 2.4 times 10 to the fifth power. And I memorize it. Left is positive. Right is negative. Left is positive. Right is negative. Positive exponent. Move it to the left. 2.4. 2.4, right? I'm going to move it to the left. Hold on. 2.4. 2.4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 spaces to the left. So the answer is point zero 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 two, even though it's a positive 5. Is that right? Well, you, oh, okay, so we have a second rule now. If you're going this way, left, positive, right, negative. If you're going the other way, left, negative, right, positive. Ugh, now I've got four things to memorize, and it's getting kind of confusing, isn't it? And then it gets even worse. What if I want you to convert this guy to scientific notation? 
Well, he's already in scientific notation, is he? No. Now I got to move him over there, 2.43, and I already have an exponent, and he's already a number. Oh my God, what do I do now? So yeah, if you're confused, you should be. Because instead of memorizing left, right, positive, negative, two different ways, so there's four things, then still not be able to do ones like that. Here's all you have to understand. What the parallel lines in an equation mean? Yeah, that's it. That's all you got to be able to understand is what equals means. You have no idea what I'm talking about yet. But hopefully after these first few examples, you will. Let's start some. Co convert that guy to scientific notation. And trust me, the equals part will come into play in a minute. Whereas the positive left, right, negative crap will not. All right, everybody get that and put your own answer there. I want you to do these. My guess is you're going to get these early ones right. I don't think you're going to get them wrong. What's that guy going to be in scientific notation, knowing what we now know? Go ahead. Write them down. Write your answer down. Don't wait for me. Write it down. If you don't write it down now, you're not going to be learning anything. Okay, you're going to wait for me to write a number down, and that's not going to give you any, do you any good. So everybody has an answer by now. Okay, what did you put down, Kirsten? Two point four three times ten to the what? Fifth power. One, two, three, four, five. I agree. And I told you you'd probably get it right. Alright. And let's do the next one before I go and illustrate why these are the case. Okay, in a minute. Let's do this one, see if you get this one right. I'll bet you both you get this one right too. I'll bet you both you get this one right. Write your own answer down. I wouldn't tell you to do it if there wasn't a reason. And if there wasn't a, if you're going to probably get it right anyway. Okay, what do you think, Bella? 7.9 times 10 to the negative third. Now, you got those right, I hope, because you did what I told you to do, and you assigned the correct sign, I hope, because you understood what they mean. Well, let's see if it works, okay? The equal sign. What did you do when you moved that decimal place to the number 243,000? You made him 2.43, correct? So what would you do to the number? You make it bigger or small? You made it smaller by a lot. You made it smaller by a lot. But they have to be equal. So what do I end up multiplying him by? A positive exponent, because 10 to the 5th is really what? What is 10 to the 5th? Right? So I'm multiplying that small number now by a big number to make them equal again. See it? That's the common sense part to it. Let's look at this guy. What did I do to this guy when I made him 7.9, and he was 0 .0079? I made him bigger. So I have to multiply by a negative exponent to make him back to being small. And I love the, doing this. I wanted to show you something here. I'm going to go uh, talk to you about this exponent stuff. Don't copy these next two down. I'm going to skip ahead to something like this. Why do negative exponents make it small? Let me show you. This is kind of cool. Remember your number line? Here's zero. Okay, here's 10. Here's 100. Here's negative 10. Here's negative 100. That's a negative. Okay? Tell me, where is 10 to the second power on this number line? What do you think, Marissa? 100. Correct. Yes. Jared, where's 10 to the first power? Read, everybody? 10 to the first power? All right. Where's 10 to the negative first power? Okay. And 10 to the negative second power? Austin. Um, negative 100. 
And oh, one, what did I skip? I skipped 10 to the 0, right? Everybody knows what 10 to the 0 is, right? Where's 10 to the 0? Zero. Well, you don't have a whole lot right up there, guys. They're almost all wrong. <laughs> well, over half are wrong, anyway. Some of you I can see already. You're questioning a couple of them, and you're definitely questioning this one. First, let's fix this one. What's anything to the zero power? One. So that's one mistake right there. Anything to the zero power, 10 to the zero power is right there. That's 10 to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is one. You might wonder why I'm going off of this tangent. Two reasons. One is to explain what negative exponents are, because you're way off on that. They're not even close. And the other reason is to explain why they affect your answer in the uh, things we're just doing. <clears throat> you're going to get questions. You've got to understand what exponents mean for your SATs. Even. Most of you guys have only taken the PSATs, right? Or have you even taken them? You're sophomores, right? So you're going to be taking them this year. SATs are a huge deal for you guys. You want to do well on them, you want to get into a good college, and you also want to get more money. You know, And the higher you get on those SATs, the more money you're going to get. It's as simple as that. It's, it's, it's a one-to-one -one correspondence. They say, schools say, oh, schools don't look at SATs anymore. That's a lie. All right, Very few schools don't look at SATs anymore. Yes, your grades matter. But you go to Berwick, people. I hate to tell you this stuff. I mean, Berwick is not an academy. No one's paying $25,000 a year to go here, like some people do to go to seminary, I mean seminary or Scranton Prep. You can be number one, number two, number three in your class. You know what that's going to get you? Eh, okay. It's all right. You can get into this college. You're not getting to Harvard for that. Not unless you can show that you got your SATs that high. You're going to get a lot of math questions like this on the test. And if these are what you think your number line is, you're way off. Who knows what we did wrong here? What we do wrong here, uh, Justin? Exactly. 10 to the negative first isn't negative 10. 10 to the negative first is 1 over 10 to the first. 10 to the negative second isn't negative 100. It's 1 over 100. You see it? So where on the number line is 10 to the negative first? Right there, between 1 and 0. Where is 10 to the negative second? Right there, between 1 and 0. Where is 10 to the negative 485th? Right there, between 0 and 1. Okay? It's a fraction. And as a fraction, let's go back to my problem. As a fraction, it explains why when I take oops, when I take 7.9 and multiply him by 10 to the negative third, it makes them equal again. 7.9 times 10 to the negative third is times 1 over 1,000, isn't it? What do you do when you divide by 1,000? You make the number smaller by three places, and now they're equal. Okay, so all of that was just to explain it to you so that hopefully, instead of memorizing left, right, positive, negative, which will screw you up big time and will only stay with you, even if you don't screw it up, stay with you for about a week. You have to understand this, and it'll make it a lot better. All right, let's do a couple more. Try out. Because as you'll see, it helps to have my method where the left, right, positive, negative doesn't really help, like in this case. If you are putting down 48300, zero, zero, you're wrong. I didn't ask you to put this guy into standard notation. I said put him into scientific notation. And how do I do that? So already you made a mistake. Watch. Take a look. Why is this guy, first of all, not in scientific notation? What's wrong with him? He has two, three, three digits to its left, right? He only should have one. So here's what I got to do. One, two spaces, correct? 4.83. Now, here's where the common sense and the equal sign come into play. What did I do to 483 when I made him 4.83? I made him smaller by two places, correct? What will I have to do to him to keep the two equal? Make him bigger by how many places? Two. So the answer is times 10 to the sixth. 
see that. Let's try another one. And this one's tough, too, for a different reason. Try that one. Well, most of you people I can see from looking at there, it's like, I used to know this stuff. You're just making it harder. <laughs> I always get that. Actually, you didn't really know it if you can't do these kind of problems. You never really knew it. You just memorized your way through it. That's the difference. I'm just making you realize that. Don't hate me for being beautiful. <laughs> All right. This is a tougher one because of the negative, negative exponent. Think about where you got to move them. I got to move them here. One, two, three. I guess right over here. 3.9. <laughs> what did I do to that 3.9? I made him bigger than he was. So what do I have to do to him? Make him smaller. Here's your big mistake. How do I make negative 5 smaller by two spaces? Negative what? Negative 7. I heard it. I saw people saying it, and I heard it. It is not negative 3. I'll bet you a third of you wrote negative 3. Because 3 is smaller than 5. But negative 7 is smaller than negative 5, isn't it? You're, you owe five, $7 or you owe $5. You, where do you have more money? You have more money if you owe only 5. This is a smaller number. I know, it's ugly. And I'm throwing all the tricks at you. After we do two easy ones like that, where everybody... <laughs> <laughs> 